So it's been a little busy around here to say the least. Now, I haven't been able to take much time out of my day since we've been doing a lot of classes, a lot of uh, videos going like full production on everything, that I haven't even had a chance to get this shop to any other level than organized chaos. Basically meaning that I don't have a whole lot of time to get everything even situated since we even moved in here a couple of months ago. So. I need to take some time out, set this shop up, get it all organized, which brings me to the videos that we're going to start putting out here little by little, is uh, things you can do to get your shop organized. Now recently I got a nice uh, box and pan break from Eastwood and uh, I didn't get the stand with it because why buy it when you can build it, right? So here we go. Something to get the uh, break off of my bench and onto its own stand. This is how to build that. Some clever ideas, some other good stuff. Let's just get on with it. So after only a couple of minutes of digging through my scrap pile here, I found the pieces that I need. It's a little bit overkill, even though the thing, you know, does weigh like 800 pounds. But I mean, this is two by two box tubing with an eighth inch wall on it. I mean, that's more than sufficient, but I don't have enough to do all the cross sections. So after a little bit more digging and some other quick math here, I found that I have some, uh, some eighth inch angle iron also in two by two, which I can use for a cross section. And then we'll just you know, we'll dig later on and, you know, see how I like the design and what I want to do with it. Maybe we'll add some triangulation into it to strengthen it up just a little bit more. But now that I have all this, all we got to do is throw it in the saw with some, uh, some of those measurements in mind and get cutting. Now, there is a bit of a process that you're going to want to follow here to kind of maximize uh, the amount of uh, work you do with the minimal amount of cutting. So first you really need to have a design in mind. In this case, uh, we have our sheet metal break, obviously, and if we have just basically a square, uh, you know, space saving kind of design here, we're, we might run into problems in the future, especially since we're going to be uh, kind of wrenching up on the leaf of the break here, and it's kind of going to, you know, make it want to topple over if we don't have any kind of support or, you know, kind of bracing in the back of it. So we're going to have to have some sort of a design that's going to allow it to be stable on the back side and also on the front side. I don't necessarily want to have it, uh, you know, straight and square on the front side either, just in case we have a heavy piece of metal or something like that. So we want to try to uh, come up with a design here that's going to make it difficult for the sheet metal break to uh, topple over. I mean, it, it weighs quite a bit, so we definitely don't want that to happen. So this is the design that I came up with. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what size or how big everything is. All you need to know is how tall you want it and where you want it to sit. And of course, you'll need to know the width of it. And we have to make two end pieces. So to not sit there and waste a bunch of time cutting all of these out one by one, we're going to cut both sides at the exact same time using the exact same measurements. But since we have angles that need to mate up, since every single angle that we have calculated on here is divided by two in order to actually make that transition angle, we have to cut them all at the exact same time. So I'm going to cut both pieces one right after the other, and I'm going to cut the tubes in order. So basically I'm going to go counter or anti-clockwise as I run all of these, and each one of those angles, I'll cut the first two tubes out, and then the angle that stays on the saw will be the start of the next tube, and which means I only have to adjust the saw four times in order to get all of our angles to to line up just right, which means we spend less time doing it. But I do have to switch the tubes out every single time that I do this. Now we definitely need a way to mount our sheet metal brake obviously to our stand. So the best thing to do here is to measure our bolt holes, uh, find out the distance in between, and then we can divide by two and then mark out where they need to go. So I did measure both sides. Turns out they are the same on both sides, so everything's good. Now on our top piece, I'm just going to measure out the center of it and then measure from our distance to our bolt holes from that center reference pretty simple. Now one thing I am going to do is kind of oversize these holes just in case there's any kind of imperfection or uh, you know difference in the actual uh, layout or anything like that. We just got to make sure that they line up but a little bit oversized than from what they need to be and we'll just use a washer on top and all the rest of that good stuff. Now quick cleanup on the grinder. I'm not going to be super particular about this but as soon as we have it all set up and done, we'll lay it out here and there's our two pieces ready to be welded. Now again, the theme here is not having a whole lot of time, so I'm going to uh, take these pieces here, and of course this is all sped up. I'm just going to make sure that they're both the exact same height after stacking them on top of each other. That way we have a pretty close, uh, you know, accurate size comparison of the two of them, you know. I mean, it's just, 
the floor is kind of you know crooked in the shop so i mean if it's if this is off just a little tiny bit it's not something we're really going to worry about now the other thing here is i am uh, actually in the process of testing out the htp pro pulse 200 and uh on this particular build just to kind of get a feel for it i'm using both pulse and uh short circuit uh transfer but i mean just listen to this thing in pulse <laughs> I mean, check that out. Super clean and pretty fast. You know, that's kind of kind of the way I like to MIG weld. That sound during the pulse too. I mean, that's just dialed. But sorry, I mean, this isn't about the uh, about the machine here. It's not a video about it. I'm just kind of blown away. But hey, either way, as soon as we get it all welded up, we got to grind our corners down here. Just those outside corners. Uh, so we can lay everything flat and even, uh, you know, nice and pretty like. And then I'm going to go back and measure the width from bolt hole to bolt hole. This will allow us to uh, figure out how much distance we need in between for our sections that will hold basically the two ends up. So I need one on top, one on bottom. We'll throw it out of that angle iron. This is a two inch angle and it's an eighth inch thick. And as soon as I have it all cut up, we'll get it set up and get ready to put it all together. Okay, that part's out of the way, not too bad. Now, a lot of welding, a lot of grinding, just kind of dressing it up. I don't need it to look all pretty or anything like that. I mean, come on, it's just a sheet metal bender stand, but we gotta get some support in here. We gotta get it, you know, from basically one piece to the other. I'm gonna go top and bottom here, and that's gonna square it all off. But if I feel that that sheet metal break or any of this is like too wonky at the end of the day, we'll add some triangulation. But ideally, I wanna add like a, uh, like a tray or something in the bottom of it. Maybe later on when I have some more scraps or something to play with, and uh, you know, we'll make it easy. Now, the most important thing to remember here are bolt holes. We measured from on the break, from center of the bolt hole to center of the bolt hole, and then we subtracted basically half the width on each side. So this is two inch wide metal. This is two inch wide metal. The holes were sent right down the middle. So that means that we need to take whatever the width was, which I believe was like 50 and a quarter. And we need to subtract two inches, brought us to 40, uh, 48 and a quarter, which is the width of our angle track here to basically stabilize or steady our piece to keep them from falling over. Now we just need to line them up to the center. And that's all I'm gonna do here is measure from here to here, the total width here and mark out the center. Same thing on that side. We'll get a couple tacks in there, double check our our measurements and then go back and fully weld it and then we can finally mount our brake. So our top section here we have 16 and a half that means we have eight and a quarter inches if my math is still good. Eight and a quarter there. Let's see we have 23 and a half that leaves us with 11 and three quarter. Put it right there. Now I'm just going to tack the bottom end first to make it a little bit easier on both sides and then we'll tack the top end, make sure that everything's lined up perfectly square, the whole works. Now getting these lined up, I do want to make sure that the angle track does not drag on the floor. Uh, so I did space it out with some quarter inch uh, stainless coupons that I had laying around here. Now these don't have to be super hardcore, you know, strong as can be, just, just tacked in place and then we can go back and square it. Okay, quick check on our bolt hole measurements, we needed 50 and a quarter. I had to run back and double check again. 15 and a quarter there, we're good to go. So since these have been lined up, everything's pretty much set exactly where it needs to be. I'm not gonna be too worried about it, you know, being completely squared off, but if we had to check, let's see. Go this way. 51 and three quarter, we'll go this way. 51 and three quarter, so we're square regardless. I mean, that's really pretty much all we need. These are just some lateral support. Everything seems to be on the flat and even for the most part. We can probably tweak it around a little bit, but once we get all of our tack welds in there, we should be just fine. I am going to do a double check here to make sure that we are actually squared with our angle. Make sure that all of it sits where it needs to be real quick and uh, let me just get to welding this thing up and calling it good. There really is no such thing as being too sure or double checking too many times. I mean, make sure that when you lay all this stuff out that you are actually square. I mean, my floor obviously is a little bit wonky and it's not, you know, not perfectly flat everywhere we go, but as long as what we measure is, uh, 
is is correct, then we can trust it. We can say that this is this is a good thing. Now, if we tried to base it on what the floor is doing, then you know that's that's going to be a problem because the floor is not always even, or at least in my shop, it's not. But going to pull the trigger on the HTP again. Kind of liking it more and more because it's making me look almost robotic. I'm not going to lie, this is this is kind of impressive. <laughs> but either way, that finishes up the welding on it. All we got to do is set up our brake, get it bolted down actually see if it'll bend some stuff. I mean, this pretty much is, uh, well, about as simple as it gets. So let's waste no more time. Okay. This is going to be heavy. I need a camera guy. We'll just uh, see if we can kind of line this up. It's got to set here on the edges. And there's no easy way to grab it. I'd say kind of go underneath. Maybe we'll pull the leaf up here and then Maybe grab around the uh, to the center section here, or maybe somewhere. Yeah, they're right there. You good? Yep. All right. Oh, geez, you're away. Woo! Hey, we got it. <laughs> All right, let's get it back. There's one hole. A little that way. A little that way. All right. There's two holes. All right. Sweet. I can live with that. Sweet, go away. So kind of like an idiot before I started this project, I, uh, I didn't go out and get the proper sized hardware. So these C-clamps will do because I really don't want an 800 pound sheet metal brake hitting the deck because uh, yeah, that's 800 pounds. <laughs> All right, let's get this set up. All right, I don't have a whole lot of sheet metal laying around because, you know, of course, we built all this from remnants anyway. So just a little piece of stainless. I think it's I think it's 18 gauge, but hey, let's give the stand a try. Looks like it'll do. Not bad. Simple yet effective. All it was was just a pile of rims, some quick math, and guess what? We now have a stand. It's just that easy. So in the future, I'm probably going to put some sort of little tray down below. That way I can put in maybe some of these fingers, you know, just so that we're not, you know, scattering them all over the shop. We can just keep them in a nice little spot, little tray, little shelf down below. Maybe some shims, other things that we normally use when it comes to doing sheet metal work and stuff like that. And I definitely have some more episodes uh, in the works about bending sheet metal and uh, using a sheet metal brake. Another thing, I'm probably going to put it on some locking caster wheels. Uh, that just makes it a little bit easier to move around and set it up wherever we need it. And when we don't need it, we can obviously store it off to the side and just get it out of the way. So hopefully that helps you uh, kind of get an idea of some of the things that you can do around here. Now, we definitely have more episodes in the works about getting the shop organized and all the rest of that stuff. So make sure you're on the lookout for it. Now, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Now, if you need to get in contact with us, hit us up on the fabricationseries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator or Facebook.com slash the fabricator series. Now make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next episode.